scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So I'm challenging all of us online, those outside, doesn't matter. When you are coming to the house of God, go as though you are going to be mentored, taught, trained, built, equipped. Don't go as if you are going to a museum to watch watch artifacts or watch a zoo to watch animals no you are going for a life-changing encounter are we together so exemption right is down exemption from evil exemption from defeat is a provision In the kingdom that can be accessed exemption from all of those things I mentioned is a provision in the kingdom that can be accessed that means it is within the power of God to cause men to experience exemption but like everything in the kingdom as we have been taught here everything in the kingdom including salvation the cheapest expression of god's grace and love there will always be a condition attached please train yourself into an understanding that every time you desire something in god know that there is a condition attached your condition is a demonstration fulfilling that condition is a demonstration of your trust in god and your authorization to commit him to deliver the results expected without condition there is no guarantee whether you are interested in what god is saying watch this if i drop a piece of cake on this table right and i don't give you a condition to pick it how else can i gauge and test whether you are interested I drop it here and say, if anyone is interested, come and pick it. Your coming to pick it is a demonstration to me that you are interested. Are we together? You will find people who will not come. I don't have to be angry with them. They are only sending a message to me that I'm not ready to eat cake. The same way other people are sending messages, I don't want to prosper. I don't want to rise. I don't want to walk in the anointing. I do not want to walk in the fullness of the reality and the possibilities contained in God. Obedience commits God. Obedience, not to what you want. You can't set rules and obey it. You obey the conditions prescribed by God. You can obey the conditions prescribed by a man and still fail. You must obey the conditions prescribed by God. Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says, God who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake to us through the prophets had in these last days spoken to us through his son. Son. God who in sundry times and diverse manners he spake to us through different people. But in these last days, among many other things, his chiefest means of communication is his son, the word, that he has appointed to be heir over all things. So it is important to trust the word of God. 
don't just believe it trust the word of god and respect the word of god say amen, amen. there are conditions that if you and i keep we will render the devil helpless and we'll find out that we can walk in the reality of triumph not as a cliche but an experience that will cause many to wonder and see the hand of god and then give him glory and i want to share with you two deep kingdom mysteries that are responsible for compelling triumph number one is what i call the mystery of putting god first matthew 6 33 the god first principle you can write it like that god dash first principle the god first principle matthew chapter 6 let's start from verse 31 if you will media 31 let's look at 31 god first principle wherefore take no thought other versions say don't worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed 32 for after these things these things what to eat what to wear the house you will get the car you will get listen carefully the children you will have etc your career whatever he says after these things do the heathen the gentiles seek notice the bible never said they get it he said after these things they seek it didn't say after these things they get it's a cause to seek those things because number one seeking them will never give them to you that's not how to get them the gentiles are getting it wrong they are playing by a wrong formula they seek those things and they never get them it looks like they get them but then you look at what else is taken from their life and it doesn't add up to nothing are we together then it says for your heavenly father your earthly father usually will forget that you need these things so god was comforting you there are many fathers in your life but the surest one the dependable your heavenly father knows that ye have need of all these things 33 but seek first everybody say seek first it didn't say seek together seek what does it mean to seek first if i organize a speech and price sam get ready to stand up and i say sam you took first come out do you join him he comes out alone topmost preferred so the bible says among the many things go back to your seat among the many things in your life i want to marry i want a job i want my enemy to die I, my i must buy a car this duplex is mine i must possess it i must receive a miracle alert i'm not saying those things are wrong he says among them come seek seek isolate god out of the group bring him out and pursue him listen carefully i'm showing you a very deep mystery let me tell you what many of us are doing we are seeking together so we say god come child come civil service where is he? come we gather them like this and say god just hold my hand but jesus said my burden is easy and my yoke you see that and so god says where do i stand here he said just be be blessed that you are in my life and god says no my jealousy cannot allow me fight with rent fight with whatever you are so obsessed about getting land you will miss a service thinking about land you will never get it that's the secret to high blood pressure are, are you listening to me now it is the secret to all this frustration that people drive themselves and fall inside a, a gutter and not even know there are so many things in your life then it says seek first give us that scripture again the kingdom seek first 
the influence the sovereignty make god first in your life and his righteousness the word righteousness there is not just the one imputed by faith understand his systems amplified says his way of doing things so if you seek the kingdom alone your obedience is still not complete he said rather than looking for money seek to understand principles seek god when you find him and his kingdom pay attention while others are running trying to look for money while others are running trying to look for breakthrough he said stay with god and understand his systems what is your reward how many of these things will come this is jesus talking please tell me how many oh he didn't say some then you now use the money you have and get the rest he said if you seek god isolate god and seek him and stay with his word learning the systems of the kingdom not just religiosity bible study just to cram scriptures understanding the systems of the kingdom he leaves you with a guarantee one guarantee that all these things remember the these things of verse 32 what to eat will run after you what to drink will run after you the cars the houses the children instead of flying from pillar to post finding out and say look look i have to do something i'm tired of being buried the bible says seek the kingdom and when you begin to study the systems of the kingdom you will find a mystery that is responsible for fruitfulness it says and when you have found it it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to you do you know why many believers never rise up it's not that we don't read the bible believe me we don't we are not interested in understanding the systems of the kingdom there are many pastors looking for crowd looking for membership yet they will not understand the mystery of growth from the word of god they just they, they run around how are you doing it you how are you doing it like a charm like a genie no sit down there is no man who wanting to to build a tower the bible says who first sit down you know life makes it look like the moment you sit down you are being delayed you 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 get it now so people can come and meet you and say oh god till now you are not working every day you are just searching scriptures look at the foolish person who is talking to you ask him how much is his salary combined you are about to get it now the bible assures you to be added i'm not saying getting a job is wrong but you are settling down no i'm not just interested in a job i'm interested in favor why have i graduated three years and no job because of that i will not just study on a job i will study on favor i'm seeking the kingdom other people are running around and sweating watching football and you are there saying lord how how is it that men rise with favor huh ruth came with her mother mother-in-law and just went to a land with nothing and within 24 hours they left provision for her boaz said leave it as you clean some you think it's just because boaz liked her there was a mystery a woman who was even begging her mother to give birth to other children and she will wait her desire of maybe 25 30 years was answered in 24 hours and you are searching while you are searching your passion is attracting the holy spirit don't think you will just come foolishly because you no 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 the holy spirit responds to passion and hunger he will watch you reading it like a storybook first that's why you will not see revelation and you say i'll not be discouraged i have to find this what happened to abimelech that made him carry gifts and just gave abraham he wanted to carry abraham's wife an angel showed up and said if you you would you are dead he didn't say you would die you would touch this woman you are dead so as a husband you are now afraid whether they'll kidnap your wife and you go back to scripture and say instead of running around policing my wife like a fool let me find out what is the mystery a kidnapper is coming and that same angel will say i've been here for a long time you touch this woman don't say 
is happening to others you don't know what they believed you define your reality by what you believe i keep saying it is when we will go to heaven that god will show me how many goats were slaughtered because of me how many rams were dragged to another house how many bottles only god my picture is everywhere somebody will download it and shoot that picture till he injures himself ah! when you surround your life with mysteries you will laugh you will laugh and laugh and laugh at a foolish devil you are everything everything, everything is you everything is you you are everything Everything is you. Everything One more time, sing it on him. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. Listen. Do you know Satan has a system? The economy of the devil is such that he's obsessed. Do you know if you work for Satan, you will still not be idle? Satan is the master of occupying people with things. The only difference is that they are useless antichrist and they have no bearing in terms of producing results. The devil will occupy you with issues that will stop you from paying attention. But hear what Jesus tells Martha. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. But one thing. How many things? One thing is needful. To sit at the master's feet. Not to sit down and worry. You must be listening and you must be understanding. You know, let me share with you a little testimony. I hardly talk about all these kinds of things. I remember years ago when God was starting out with us. That time, Zaria was not the way it is now. That time there were so many people, pastors, reverends, apostles, prophets. I mean, everybody was called. It was, it was, Zaria was on fire. Everybody was doing something. I remember clearly there were some gentlemen who would come and meet me and say, man of God, why are you always sitting like this? You are always writing, studying the Bible. One even offered to sponsor a, a radio program for me. He said, no, at your level, I mean, you are supposed to organize healing meetings organize this and, and i laughed you know what i was doing i was searching the mysteries of the kingdom i didn't want to gather people and be a fool and waste their time and now be resentful at those having results i knew it would take time brothers and sisters ask those who knew me then i spent my life studying scripture i could sit down a whole day just searching the mysteries you see this hurry hurry in life is a very bad thing god is a god of speed but he does not rush people he teaches you the precepts do you know i say it with all humility over 90 percent of those people today they are not even in ministry they were passionate about fame my god passionate about pas passionate about briefcase and suit the few times i spent with them irritated me you sat down with them in 10 minutes they were talking about their suit i couldn't afford it i could afford to study the word so i stayed on what i could afford god made it cheap enough for me to stay there there were so many people just they, all this fake and false life oh my shoe is this my dad and i just ignored them with all their nonsense and i'm glad i did just like some of you now while others are running god is saying sit down you are saying god for how long god is saying if you knew where i'm taking you you will start rejoicing because one step in knowledge will cover up 10 years of foolishness 10 years of wallowing in trouble you know this money thing god has said it's a year of wealth listen carefully to me most people believe that god cannot bless them they really do that's why they don't listen to him if you were having a job Sam and you were paid let's say hundred thousand how much is that in one year 
please help me one point assuming nothing changes in 10 years how i was going to say how old is that how how much is that 12 million because of 12 million you rubbish your 10 years rubbish your 10 years fighting quarreling hating and living foolishly whereas god is saying if you will pay attention to me i can do something to you and bring your 10 years to six months to two months to one month to one week and many of you are god don't just leave me i know what i'm doing you know for many people the apex of fulfillment is when they get a job just so i mean what when you are talking like they say, at least get out i have a job a good job what is a good job what is your definition of a good job when you are employed my definition of a good job is a good job that i have absolute control of if i cannot control it is not a good job because somebody's wickedness can affect me correct i'm not saying get a job is bad no 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 we prophesy jobs here there are many disciplined diligent employed people don't be lazy and think i'm endorsing you i'm about to attack you from the other side you know me i will have to balance it don't think it's not an endorsement for irresponsibility for whatever reason but i'm i'm showing you the vanity of trusting in things these are the things that destroy us to an extent that they now give somebody a job if the devil does it in such a way that every day you go to church or fellowship that's the day you will be needed most that's a useless and nonsense job i repeat that is a useless and what nonsense job the job that has to make you leave god to do it is a stupid job if you are involved leave it now let men insult me no problem leave it listen i've worked with god small he's reliable listen to what i'm telling you are we together now that's why they get angry when god blesses people because they come and say ah, ah, pastor alpha Papa, what happened three cars two duplexes then the painful part is he didn't build any of them say no this, this is i mean I'm, no i can't i don't like this guy whether you like it or not it's a mystery everybody say mystery that's why i call it a mystery a mystery of exemption that where others have to do a lot of things i've said it listen if you're a businessman here listen to me and don't think i'm daft as i speak stop wasting your time to save money to buy land in the kingdom you don't buy land through saving you provoke favor listen i know what i'm saying if well god bless you you can you can save and god will honor it i will even pray on it but you are you will be ready for frustration satan that i know will cause something you must eat out of that money no matter how disciplined you are when you are pushed to the wall you must withdraw something you don't get land you don't get properties by saving psalm 44 verse 3 give it to us please read that scripture and never forget it's just a digression and i'll get back to our subject of discussion and we'll pray i want us to pray tonight help us please psalm 44 verse 3 you are a christian please read it with all your heart one two read uh-huh so how did they get the land now teach somebody this thing and watch him insult you and say you and that your stupid man of god in koinonia you people should continue this nonsense you will beg for bread beg for bread see i'm teaching what i'm teaching some of you is very hard even you you are trying to believe it but what they have told you you are now wondering i hope it will work it's like leaving a rope you are about to fall and i'm saying leave that rope and just come and you are saying show me the the quota and i'm saying just leave it if it be thou bid me come what i'm sharing many of you i can't you, you see i'm a spiritual man i receive a spiritual feedback i see how many of you are struggling to believe and agree with what i'm saying 
it's not like you want to doubt it but you are saying, ah apostle is hard though some are foolishly say it's because you are a man of god you are enjoying was i born a man of god You, you join the junk that journalists carry and talk about people and say you are enjoying. People give you tithe and give you offering. No. I'm showing you how to be happy. That's how to be happy. That you can carry your wife and be happy. You can see a Jimmy and his wife. You can see Ogasho and Shade. There are happy people. You can see Aaron, several Pastor Alpha. There are other angry people. You see them and their wives and stress. That guy is 35. But even you, you would, you would think that he is maybe 50. Life. Life squeezed him. Disobedience added his weight on top. And the devil sat on it. That's his destiny. Don't laugh. Take very seriously what I'm telling you. There are people, you see them with their wives happy, giving God glory, giving God praise because they are, they, are, they are accessing the mysteries of the kingdom. They know what to do with their children. They know what to do with the enemy. Kai, may you know what to do. It's a disaster to be confronted with something you do not know what to do. The Bible says, but he himself, Jesus now knew what to do. Look at the brother that shared the testimony. The one who trekked from um, this is the police station or somewhere. Now, you see, can you see that in spite of the trekking, he now climbed a bike and the devil wanted to kill him? It's not fear. It's a mystery. Listen, when you trust God, you commit him. Let me tell you something about believing God. Watch this. If this is the door. Watch this. This is a big revelation for someone. Call this place I'm standing the door to your destiny. Are we together? If you turn around following this door with total sincerity believing that it is God that is leading you, God will remove this door and keep it here to make sure you don't miss it. Let this be a deep word of comfort to somebody. Stop being afraid. Who said he must remain there? He said, I am the door. When he moves, the door moves. So listen, listen. That's why God protected that brother and brought him to hear the word. The devil may have planned. God does not give men doors. He's the door. Once you are following him, I tell you in your sincerity, even in your error, he will still say, I am the door. Pass. I'm no longer... A slave to fear. I am a child. Hold on. When you see God doing the great things that He's doing through my life and through many great men, it's not because we got His instructions 100%. It's because our hearts are sincere. So, while based on what you saw in a vision, I'm supposed to die, God shifts the door and says, Pass. Let the enemies keep prophesying themselves into doom they were right but god was god did you hear what i said they were right their predictions were correct i shouldn't have made it but god is god choose which part to follow right or god i follow him oh. i follow him are you hearing what i'm saying i don't walk with god with fear since God revealed this to me, I mean, I live a very happy life to hell with Satan. I live a very happy life. My heart for God is the chief requirement. He will take me to the place of destiny. If this is the path God earmarked for me, and I follow this path, but with a heart of sincerity, knowing that I seek God, my sincerity puts pressure on his reputation he will change that destiny and carry it and bring it here believe me i have worked with him that's the god we serve that's the god we serve that's the god we serve that's the reason why when a man gives you prophecy it's still not the highest thing you can change it he's speaking based on what he saw 
but there is something between you and God that can change it. Have you not heard that there were people who somebody saw, a doctor saw that woman had lost a child. They saw this guy had lost um, whatever and the man would look and say, it is true. I'm seeing blood. You have lost a child. But I bring a sincerity between me and God. And after nine months, a child comes out. Where did he come out from? I am the door. Door means access. The door to everything. Don't let men fool you and make it look like you have missed it. You have missed it. You hear people make that arrogant statement. You have missed it. Miss what? God? My God? You are joking. He will navigate that door. Hear what I'm telling you. This is why restoration is possible. He can take it and turn the direction and bring it. Listen, he is God. He does not submit to any man. You be God, you know, be man. No. You be God, you know, be man. No. Alpha and Omega, you be God. You be God, oh. You be God, oh. Sing it one more time. tell you a big secret the key is not perfection the key is sincerity learn this it's not hearing God 100% that guarantees your victory it's the sincerity of your heart hmm. are you hearing what I'm teaching you tonight God first you touch a man addicted to God you are in trouble I'm telling you you touch a man that has carried himself and said, God, I belong to you. I seek you first. When you seek other things and leave God behind, you authorize darkness to tear down your life. When you say it, people think you are stupid. They think it's just a talk for preachers. No, sir. God first. God always. And you are free. The first key to exemption. Hear me. Is when God occupies every space in your life you will watch trouble come before you like this and pass you as if you're a spirit God first it's not about koinonia it's not about being a civil servant or a businessman there are many foolish career people who threw God away they loved God while they were on campus the moment they graduated, they became too matured for God. They threw him away and said, now we have, we have become, you know, I read, I read engineering, I read maths, I read, I read whatever it is. Lower levels of knowledge. They throw God, they throw his word, they throw everything. You never find them talking about God. They are even embarrassed. You come to their house, you mention God, you say you have come with this God, God thing, pastor. Run away from such kind of people. Koinonia, hear me. I love you too much. I'm training you to become a wonder. Run away from anybody who does not prioritize God. I don't care whether he's a politician, whether he's a businessman. If it's your husband or wife, you have a work to do. Start interceding seriously. Do you know, when people come and meet me and they say they are ready to marry, even if you hold hamper for me, it's a joke. Do you love God? Are you serious? You don't bribe me with wine and hamper. I'm not an idiot. Do you love God? Because when all else fail, that one thing will bring you back. Job lost everything. And the one thing left, the wife said, leave it all. Job said, yeah, leave God again. I lost everything. And you are now saying I should leave God. Why do you speak like one of these foolish women? And God had him. In pain, I hold on to you. Oh, I lost my job, but Lord, I hold on to you. How can I lose you? Are we together? My finances crashed, but I hold on to you. God first. The marriage didn't work out. Still God first. The miscarriage happened. God first. I thought I would not need to go for a surgery, but I went for a surgery. God first. 
Everybody shout God first. God first. Before that brother, God first. Before that sister, let the brother come and meet you loving God. Don't move around and be saying I'm 30 years. Keep quiet. God first. Don't sit down moving around and say, why wouldn't I get a job? Let the job come and meet you with God. Inseparable. How can I leave him? What will be my reason? That he's not faithful. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. Hey, I, I never, never see, see anyone like you. I never see. Please help me praise my like God. I never see anyone. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. Sit down. Do you know some of you are looking at me strange? As you rise and you see many cheap victories, you will know why we praise God. We gave an instruction here, hold on, that people should dance their way to the next level. There were too many big people, big CEOs, arrogant people who felt too big. Why, why will I make myself a small child? Please, this koinonia, you make people look stupid. The kingdom is for children. When you become too big for the kingdom, you are too big for breakthrough. Too big for what? You think I like dancing? Have you ever seen me dance? Do you think I like dancing? But at his word, you become foolish enough to step into that realm. Are we together? God first. That you vow a vow tonight and say, Lord, listen, brothers and sisters, you know, every time I come here, I watch these little children and their parents. I see how many wrong things they do in 10 minutes. And I see how their parents go. I hear Ejimi calling his child. The wife is there. Everybody doing all they're doing. And I'm saying, that's it. That's the message. God first. They don't run to me. They run to their parents. God first. We hate God. That's why we run to him last. We claim we love him. The moment people are in trouble, you run to your strongest point of deliverance, which is your uncle. And you ran and he told you the money has not come yet. You insulted him and left angrily. You went to another auntie to an extent that you went to a stranger on the road and said, Sir, if I die now, is it fair? And God, hold on. God is watching. We pray in tongues. We roll around. Are, 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 are you hearing what I'm saying? We cry. We do a lot of emotional things. But in the midst of real life situations, let me tell you, God is my witness. You are spiritual people. Listen. The, every issue of my life, my first point of reference is God. I have convinced myself that whatever God cannot do in my life cannot be done. No. Are we together? Yeah. The moment there is trouble, and you are calling apostles, it doesn't work. You call prayer department leaders. It doesn't work. Call a Jimmy. It doesn't work. Call pastor Alpha. Call him. They are wicked. No. God is with you in the room there. You don't believe it and you are not even interested. How many people go and sit down in the offices of men from morning till evening? They sit by 7 till 10. Then the man just comes and says, I'm tired. Can you come? Ah, yeah, yeah. No problem. How can I be angry? Because you think that the man can wipe your tears. And you spend 10 minutes in the presence of God. You are grumbling around and talking nonsense. Oh God, you are my. You now see why I sing that song? And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Listen, do you know, brothers and sisters, if not for God, the troubles I would have entered, the fulfillment of the prophecies of the enemy, Koinonia would have crashed, crashed like a plane, but for God. But for God, 
you will keep watching this ministry rise mysteriously like an edifice it's not because of perfection it's because of God when you know this you will be outspoken about God you think your business will rise because you have capital and so you will keep struggling with it there another ignorant person who respects God will come from nowhere and rise that's why you see when listen listen carefully when men are clapping and saying ah apostle did this i thank god for it oh but me and god we 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 know take god out of my life i'm as useless as this table you are seeing in the presence of anyone i'm not ashamed of it i say it everywhere because every time i declare him i bring joy to his heart and he says son you are sitting down on so much power yet you are telling men it's not you most of you will not do it let me tell you there are many of you here looking at me if you carry one tenth of the kind of anointing god has put in my heart pe people will worship you you will put your name on your shoe you will be, by now they would have made rapper with my face <laughs> by now you would have done everything but for him how can i dare claim that i'm responsible for this result will i be honest i may deceive you and you will believe me but I know. Listen, after great meetings like this, when I go back home, I have my small chair. I just kneel down. And sometimes you just see me hold the chair and I'm just laughing. I say, Kai God, boy, you self. Look at how these people are clapping. Sometimes the seeds that they sow into my life, I wait till this, my boys that are working for me, when they go home, I scatter it on the ground and I keep looking at it. I say, but God, you know, this thing doesn't belong to me, Abby. It really belongs to you. Why will somebody walk and you pay someone else? And God says it's yours. That's your price for believing me. God first. Who deceived you that God is only for preachers? Who deceived you that God is only for pastors' wives? Please hear me. There are people here inside, outside, online. You are not determined to be passionate about God. They ask you, you say, me, I, I take my things easy. I don't overdo anything. You better overdo when it comes to God. Because life will so crush you into pieces. Life is spiritual. When I worship God, I make sure Satan sees me. Worshiping God is a love affair. And he's not invited. He's absolutely not invited. I sing this song not because it's a special number is a revelation to me he is my god the way hope can hold a husband and say my husband you don't claim what is not your own this water is my own right the welfare gave me if you come to touch it now i'll say you are a, you are a word what are you thief thief there is a name for that when you claim he is your god you prove it through your intimacy it's not talk what right have you to stand and say let the power of god move what right have you you know most people think it's just by talking now the power of god will move 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 you are you are a big joker not with god not with god you must have a track record not of perfection of passion Believe me, if you do not have passion for God, forget about doing business with God in this kingdom. I want to ask you a question. When was the last time you took a day off to spend time with God? Don't tell me you love him. Let's examine it. You see why it is better for some people to not get jobs? Because God is having their attention. Now that they are idle, they can spend time. But the moment they get up, they are now in a hurry, making money hurry making whatever and then the times that they now have to spend with god the devil now occupies them with something else don't look for what only god can give it's not missing stay with the door the one who has it and he will give you many preachers come to me and they say man of god i want grace i want to see results in my ministry and I look at them, I say, so what do you expect to happen? And they just bring out of a bag, you see like four or five different anointing oils. And I'm not against it. They bring it as a man of God, just breathe on it. 
I will carry it back. And I look at the person and laugh. I almost want to tell him, get out of here. You are joking. You breathe a relationship. Is that how you grow your relationship? Time. Intimacy. Spend time with God. No. Spend time with men. Yes. Spend time with liars and psychophants who will clap for you now and betray you. And betray you. Unreliable as they are. They will clap for you as if they love you. As soon as you turn, they will stab you. Listen, I stopped trusting men's sins. Men are as unreliable as the devil. I trust God. So it doesn't matter what men, what they do to me. Everybody say God first. Say it, God first. Bless you. Let's look at the second part very quickly. Our time is gone. The second mystery that commands exemption aside from putting God first in everything is the mystery of kingdom service write it down the mystery of kingdom service I'm going to be very fast please write it and we'll pray kingdom service is promoting the interest and the purposes of God on earth promoting the interest and the purposes of God on earth is an extension of your love and your passion for God. Kingdom service. What is kingdom service? Serving God for a living. Serving God for a living. Kingdom service is not just cleaning chairs. No, no, no. Serving God for a living. There are three dimensions to kingdom service. Maybe we'll just touch one and then next week we can take the other one. I wanted us to finish because we'll start a series. Let's see how God will help us. Number one, the first proof or the first index to measure your kingdom service is soul winning and establishment. Soul winning and soul establishment. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 soul winning and soul establishment brothers and sisters is a jackpot of breakthrough look at me anybody who tells you working for God does not pay is lying to you and they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn how many many to righteousness they shall be as the stars. That's their reward for turning many to righteousness. Soul winning is not for evangelists. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. Please give it to us quickly. Proverbs 11 verse 30. Soul winning as a demonstration of your service to the kingdom. It says, and the fruit of the righteous is as a tree of life. And he that winneth souls, very clearly, he that winneth souls is what? Wise. And the Bible speaking about wisdom says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Long lasting riches. Not 10 years and you are down forever wisdom wisdom that when you win souls it is a service to the kingdom that compels God to bless you second Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18 to 20 very interesting scripture second Corinthians chapter 5 quickly please verse 18 to 20 the bible tells us that god has given us both the ministry and the word of reconciliation two things both the ministry and all things are of god who had reconciled us to himself by jesus christ and had given us what's the first thing it's an assignment he didn't give pastors he gave all men the ministry of reconciliation next verse to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them 
and had committed unto us what the word he didn't just give you the ministry he gave you the word what to say how to get men saved not just the passion and the assignment both the ministry and the word look at me one of the biggest secrets to the growth of any flourishing ministry is soul winning not revelation i don't care how deep that ministry is a ministry that trivializes soul winning will never grow go and search your bible search modern history search today i say it without any sense of shame find out a ministry no matter how deep they are in the things of god healing deliverance prophecy revelation whatever if soul winning is not an outspoken priority you never will find god trusting them with people most people think soul winning is a basic thing in christianity it's for people who don't have anything else to offer is that true what jesus died for everybody says soul winning there are some of you who can win souls and win your way out of every trouble you watch people who have not turned to righteousness you watch people you are coming for koinonia you move around and you watch lives and destinies languishing and going to hell and it doesn't bother you because you feel apostle will come and do it your passion for souls there are people here who god has lifted in strange ways they make it as a point of contact to both win souls and draw them to the house of god where they will be saved shortly i'm going to make an altar call and almost everyone who will come out here was invited by somebody you have won a soul let me tell you every time you bring a soul to god as he's getting born again start clapping it's like taking a check to a bank while you are clapping for his eternal salvation clap for yourself too because the devil is watching you have saved the soul and authorized yourself for exemption a woman can win her way out of barrenness that you sit down and say satan you claim you will not give me a child i need three children i will win five souls for every child and you go out and you win five and say that's my firstborn let's see the devil that will stop your womb from taking it if you don't have womb the baby will grow anywhere after all germs grow anywhere fibro grows anywhere growth grow anywhere it doesn't matter where the baby grows the most important thing is that he comes out after nine months are we together koinonia is heavily protected among other things by the mystery of soul winning i have passion genuine passion for souls not fake that pastors just do and cry genuine passion for souls you are talking to somebody he says somebody else has talked has spoken to me say it doesn't matter it doesn't matter that somebody spoke to you does not mean you were born again i'm still talking to you koinonia hear me i challenge you begin a serious project of soul winning instead of gossiping on facebook discussing matters of people that are not your business writing things about men of god somebody i was i was i was shown somebody who tried to write a, a, some things about me thinking he knows me and i said look at do you see this foolish people he would have used that time and that unit to win a soul do you know the joy in the heart of a father when one person comes to stand before jesus listen every time we pray for crowd god sees my heart it is never for a name it is never to build an empire i'm smart enough to know how to be famous i'm intelligent enough to be able to write books souls souls that when you win souls it's on your record the bible says there is joy in heaven since you got born again let me tell you it's a shame as a believer if right from the beginning of this year till now you have not contributed in anyone's coming to the kingdom it's a shame you are doing the same thing an irresponsible man does to not bring food to a house the same way we say a man is stupid for not bringing food to his house 
Imagine a man married and comes home empty-handed, and the wife is saying, "Honey, where's the food?" He said, "Food for what?" That's exactly what someone does if he doesn't win souls. You watch people go to hell. The primary assignment God has given me is not just to build and equip believers. You have to save them first before they are established. Facebook, text messages. You can find a way of reaching a soul genuinely don't just say i think he's saved and talk to him and say well you see you have to be serious with god think about it then you go back smiling you didn't save him you only informed him that his life is not going well it's a different thing if he rejects but give people a chance preach to your parents preach to your loved ones you see how we celebrate so winning here many of you when people give testimonies of cars i got a car I got a plane you clap but they say someone got born again and somebody just knows oh that's all right let's hear the real testimony which one is the real one the car that will perish have you not grown spiritually enough to know how the the mundanity and the vanity of the things of this life that's why we pray for souls that's why as much as possible as much as god grants us grace we keep making altar calls even if nobody comes let there be a witness in heaven are we together some of you that's what you did that god lifted you that's how this ministry started we would pray for people those times before they got admission when people came beef that was before they started post ume i remember as soon as people come we're like holding them and the next thing they get born again they get filled with the holy spirit and we create room for them to be established if you heal men and don't save them they are going to hell are you hearing what i'm telling you if you give if i give you money and you are not saved where are you going to don't say heaven don't let anyone lie to you you are going to heaven you are you don't have jesus in your heart please don't let any theologian deceive you you are going straight to hell say hell there is a real place like that people left this morning they are there right now don't let people fool you and make it look as if the moment you're a nice person you go to heaven being nice does not take people to heaven if you cannot live your lifetime you deserve to go to hell if you live your lifetime without acknowledging the one who brought you you spent 70 years of your life and paid no attention to god this night i want to challenge you your phone is full of many names that are not born again you are looking at them and you are watching them god has given you access and influence over their lives many of our loved ones are on their way to hell we know it we know they're on their way to hell our roommates are on their way to hell our work people are on their way to hell our friends your husband is on his way to hell your wife some of our stubborn children are on their way to hell you can start interceding don't say any man cannot be saved that's the talk of the devil i have seen impossible people get saved there's nobody i i, I don't believe that can be saved do you pray for souls or do you pray for money some of you are surprised we are supposed to be talking about wealth I'm showing you a jackpot of financial prosperity. God is not a, a, a journey that you crack like a charm. Souls. For as long as there is breath in me, I will keep leading people to Jesus. Preacher or no preacher, I will make sure they love him. I will make sure they love him. Stop discussing other things with people and don't probe their salvation people come to you and say we want to marry you talk about every other thing there is a way you can discern oh this guy is saved but there's a way you know this brother is not saved and he's about to marry a lady he's inviting satan officially to be the lord of that home you have to save it you are not just saving a man you are saving every child that will come you know believers don't be too western to be obedient take the foolishness of the word of god and be serious 
on tuesday you are coming for prayer department prayer band meeting is the only department that allows other people to join them you come alone you leave and you are going and you know that somebody so he, he may not be born again dear boy can be a starting point it takes a while to save souls you may not save them overnight but start introducing them to the atmosphere of god's presence the same way some of you now introduce someone here doesn't matter what religion doesn't matter what age doesn't matter what rest what, what race i have little respect for any man of god that does not pay attention to the simplicity of soul winning i don't care what you have the greatest people when all is said and done he that winneth souls is wise you have no authorization to prosper and to ex be exempted from the the ills and the perils that will keep languishing men when you are not a soul winner are you blessed we'll stop here next week we'll take on the others but listen to me very carefully tonight one of the many prayers you'll be praying is to cry for grace to have a personal revelation of soul winning i don't want you to just get emotional over what i'm saying you don't have to get tracks and move around it is your lifestyle huh there are certain businesses that in nigeria when the businesses came out people were too grateful to keep quiet they ran to people by themselves have you heard about this ah my life is changing and the person say i'm not listening you must listen i'm not going anywhere i love you too much to leave you that's the same way that's the same way you talk to somebody are we together the person is laughing and says see you and this your god thing we did it before we did this god thing before and tell him you need to go back god is not a project that you do before and leave many of the people you preach to will tell you they were once saved there was no follow-up system and no structure for establishment so when the cares of life came upon them in anger if god was god why did he allow my wife die if god was god why did he allow me to fail if god was god why did he allow me to do this i left god since and they say it explain the gospel to them let them know that there is a difference between an encounter with god and understanding his principles many people think the moment i come to jesus christ everything will change and be careful how you win souls the basis of winning souls is not just to prosper them it's a submission it's a covenant of surrender and submission when two people are getting married they ask them serious questions will you be there for one another whether things go well or not they answer yes to everything and they mean it don't don't lie to people of course in christ you have access to these things but train people to love god more than things and situations don't don't make people think immediately i run to god everything will change and then an attack starts on account of their decision and they no longer can stand there are many people who have been of other religions here some of them are here listening to me they have made bold decisions for jesus and some of them we have had to come in even as a ministry to shield and help them because they they have gone and some are still going through heavy pain they deserted them financially left them for whatever reason but because they were saved well they were saved to love and live for jesus i love you jesus i worship and adore you i just want to tell you that i love you more than anything before i make an altar call while everybody is seated i want you to cry pray while you are seated cry to god with every passion in you and say lord i am sorry for ignoring souls i've been trying to do ministry and i've watched people go to hell there are people who if i had spoken to them last week last month pray lord you gave me an anointing i've been joking with it just throwing people on the floor and not paying attention to their salvation 
you gave me a ministry i've been playing games with it watching people look warm and unserious with god brothers and sisters let's be sincere with ourselves that's not how we started that's not how we started with god we started with the simplicity of passion for souls pray talk to god they call you pastor's wife and you were ashamed and you stopped ah they insulted you and embarrassed you and you were ashamed then you stopped outside are you praying lord fresh passion to engage the mysteries that will exempt me from trouble from the grip of witchcraft from destruction that my life will cause men to love god my life will cause men to be on fire how can i be in an environment no one is changing no one is serious no one's prayer life is rising no one's word life is growing never transfer the message to anybody you've never bought a bible for anyone never done anything to contribute to the salvation of anyone you're not acting as a genuine christian believe me brothers and sisters yet you want the anointing yet you want to be invited for crusades do you want the name or do you love god do you want the fame or do you love god do you just want the prestige and the persona or are you genuinely passionate in this place here and now lord your kingdom reign your kingdom reign in our lives in our homes your kingdom reign your kingdom reign through my life through my life i let your kingdom reign your kingdom reign through my life through my life tonight i let your kingdom reign your kingdom reign your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign, above all, above all, your kingdom reign. forget about fame and go for souls and watch the wonder god will do with your life forget about complaining for a husband or a wife and go for souls forget about the witchcraft in your family i know you were born with witchcraft i know there are practicing people who are manipulating your destiny leave them alone and go for souls and let me see the charm that will tie you down souls don't just pay tight don't just sow seeds win souls win souls win souls you are too big to win souls you are too big to be exempted you are too big to turn many to righteousness you are too big to receive the defense of god against the vicissitudes of life but apostle i'm a shy person that's why there is grace for you but apostle i'm not a man of god the great commission is not for men of god my friend pray 
prayer point number two lord every soul appointed to be saved through my life in the name of jesus i begin to seek them and pursue them every soul appointed there is somebody that must escape hell because i am alive lord where are they reveal them to me and give me the grace to hunt them lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray koinonia who have you appointed to be saved through my life lord who have you appointed to be saved through koinonia who have you appointed to be saved to be serious with god through our teachings Jesus said, all that you have given me, I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition that scriptures may be fulfilled and none is lost and none is lost. Hallelujah. Before I make the altar call, I want you to take two minutes. Find somebody that is serious and I want you to intercede for your family members and say I stop them from going to hell Lord they can't go to hell I know as at now my father is not yet a Christian but Lord eternity in hell have mercy pray my brother my husband my wife pray for those who are saved too and are not serious there are people saved but not serious saved but not passionate Save them, O God. We release angels, angels of salvation. Draw them to meetings, draw them to crusades, draw them to meetings. We release angels of salvation. Lord, give them dreams. May they have encounters with Jesus in their sleep. May they have an encounter with Jesus in their offices. It's time for their salvation. hallelujah hallelujah we are rounding up we are going to pray for salvation through encounters that's the strange dimension the spirit of god is moving right now where men by themselves are in a room all of a sudden they are caught up an encounter that will rattle every stubbornness lift your voice and cry lord we release encounters this night dreams this night visions this night encounters in the beer parlor encounters in public places encounters in business board meetings encounters while he's preparing to go for armed robbery encounters on the road encounters with jesus The last prayer point you are going to pray and say lord i have made you first in my life and i'm committed to serving you therefore i invoke exemption upon my life i no longer will cry their cry prophesy it i no longer will go through their pain no glorious exemption from poverty Glorious exemption from sickness. Glorious exemption from failure. Are you praying? 
May that mystery be activated in my life. May that mystery be activated. Surely they will gather. But by this mystery, they will scatter. They will come in one way. And the Lord will disperse them in seven ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head. I want to speak to you. I prophesy upon everyone here as you are laying your hands the same way a mark was put by God to Cain and said by this mark you anyone who sees you will leave you in peace he did it to a sinner Cain he put a mark right now in the name of Jesus as you are placing your hand on your head I place a mark of exemption upon you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hear me if the devil is looking for men to kill in a car accident it will not it will be minus you in the name of Jesus Christ hear me when the devil is fermenting trouble to destroy families cause scandal between husband and wife cause scandal between pastor and whatever in the name of Jesus minus you you are exempted in the name of Jesus hear me the same way God has exempted this ministry from financial turmoil and recession I pray upon you beginning from this night every time a man is looking for who to favor I command them to find you your hands I'm still praying if there is any mark just keep your hands if there is any mark upon anyone's life that brings bad luck that brings enemies that brings the wrong people that brings the wrong situations the wrong atmospheres I'm speaking to you right now that mark is erased forever 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 erased forever erased forever that mark upon your ministry that misrepresents you that mark upon your life every sincere thing you want to do men see it in another way that's the mark of the devil every time you are doing things genuinely but people keep misunderstanding you I cancel that mark from your life now Down your hands keep standing everybody there are people here who are going to run out here right now please listen carefully you are here the wickedness in the world the reality of hell the reality of the troubles that come to a life without Christ is not worth it there are several people in this place right now several people in the first and second overflow across the road online you have never genuinely made a serious decision for jesus christ it doesn't mean you're a bad person you've not paid this much attention to the word of god to see the need to be saved but now you are hearing me and you are saying man of god if you make a call i will come number two there are those who you are just not serious with god we don't even know what you can become today you are one leg in tomorrow you run out you, you have to stop playing games with God and keep your passion steady those two groups of people I want you to run to Jesus now our time is up please run like you are serious with God there are many outside young and old in the name of Jesus run to the front one keep coming clear the way for those outside two Hey, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Keep coming. No turning back. I have decided to 
Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Listen, some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. You are standing before the Lord of heaven. The Holy Spirit is ministering to me. That there are still about six people outside that he's speaking to come out now don't struggle with god the lord is telling me that there are at least six people outside he's talking to them but they are being hardened outside specifically make your way don't be ashamed don't be ashamed you have to stand and be serious please don't come out and play games this is between you and your God keep coming quickly so that you join the prayers God bless you keep coming if your friend is trying to stop you from coming out leave your friend and come this is about your salvation this is about your destiny keep coming koinonia is sacrifice of your club motivate them encourage them let them know we're a family that is interested in their salvation hallelujah thank you so much for the courage i know it takes courage because we live in a foolish generation that ignores god and laugh and scorn out people who are serious with him but i want you to lift your right hand to heaven the one who died for you the one who saved you some of you as you are lifting up your hands you are lifting up a generation because they are in you say this passionately and sincerely you are not reciting a poem. Salvation prayer is not a poem. It's not a joke. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. This night, I declare my love, my seriousness, and my desire to walk with you. I repent of the way I have lived my life. Help me tonight. I obtain mercy. I declare this night that my life, my destiny belongs to you. Take it, use it for your glory. I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that I'm a child of God. From tonight, I move forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted father i stretch my hands towards these people and i pray let this decision be genuine in the name of jesus the grace that saves and the grace that preserves let it be their heritage i separate you from wrong associations i break you free from every grip of the devil that keeps you in one spot i declare that your life begins to move from glory to glory this salvation this genuine acknowledgement remains with you for the rest of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations to you. I want you to follow the gentleman, the lady waving her hands. There's a gentleman and a lady, they are waving their hands. Please, all of you this way, give them your correct details and we'll follow you up very appropriately. God bless you. All of you this way. God bless you. God bless you. Appreciate them, Koinonia. I appreciate that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Keep standing, everybody. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. 
as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.